<coughs> my eulogy for Digger. My voice is a bit strained. <coughs> a little bit of lim laryngitis. Anyways, this is for Digger's fan. Digger just passed. 23 years old. He was born in 1988. Um, got him in 1991. And he just passed January 5th, 2012. And this is his story. The story of Digger. <coughs> June 4th, 1991. A sweet little cockatiel named Digger arrived in our home. He was four years old at the time. With much regret, his family had to give him up. You see, there was a newborn baby that Digger liked to play with, and sometimes he would bite and nip at the baby's eyes. So the family searched for good people to adopt him, with love free to a good home. So a friend of a friend offered Digger to my mother, who at first said, no way. But then she met him and changed her mind. Such a handsome cinnamon teal who greeted her with a cheerful song, a song I've heard pretty much every day from the age of 18 into most of my adult life. When I first met him, I was like, I don't know about him, and like most teens, retreated to my room and shut the door. Digger's cage was stationed right outside my door, and every day at 7 a.m. sharp, he would chirp. It sounded like, Yoo-hoo! Hey! Open up! Mom would uncover him, open the cage, and go back to bed. I've always been a late sleeper and found it a little annoying that he would chirp and chirp louder and louder. Hey, you! Open up! I want in! Open up now! And he'd fly up to the door, back to the cage, back and forth, relentlessly demanding his way. So Mom would open my door and in shot the digger. He would land on my head as I tried to sleep and gently start his morning concerto. Yoo-hoo, yoo-hoo-hoo-hoo, and walk up and down my blanketed body, climbing through the folds and mounds of comforter and pillows on a mission to make sure I'm up. My father would always say, life starts every morning. He didn't particularly approve of his daughters sleeping in till noon, which I loved and still do. And Digger certainly wasn't going to have it either. So began the morning drill call of Digger, yelling, Wake up! Let me in! Let me in! So I let him in and went right back to bed. And we made a deal. I'll let you in, but you must be quiet. It's just too damn early to be whistling Dixie, okay, bird? Okay, he'd say without saying anything, and we'd get comfy on the pillow next to me or on my head and take a nap. That was the daily routine which went on daily for several years. As he matured, he too learned to start sleeping in later. Every time I'd leave my room, he would aggressively fly at me and land on my head. Couldn't even shake him off. My morning Turkish coffee ritual became a favorite with Digger too. Whatever I was drinking or eating, he had to have some too. Most birds like fruits and vegetables. In fact, it's vital for optimum health not for the digger. He would react rather offended at offerings of lettuce, and it would wilt away in his cage. Could not get him to eat his veggies. He blatantly refused. My favorite snack has always been potato chips, and before even trying it, Digger knew he liked it too, preferably pre-chewed and from my mouth. Hey, mummy, open up, let me in. He frantically climbed up my neck and pushed his head into my mouth. It was in my best interest to open up and let him pick the chewy gruel from my teeth. Another daily ritual. Whatever mummy's eating, I'm eating too. It's interesting how he just kind of became my bird. Whenever I'd come home long before I reached the door, he would chirp and scream in advance. Hey, yoo-hoo, yoo-hoo and fly too high and too low and figure eights until the door opened. Upon entrance, most people take their hats off. Well, I'd be putting mine on. The digger hat became a constant thing that I would just have to accept and wear in the house. When he wasn't constantly on my head, my back, or my case, 
he loved to play with his toys in his cage, the mirror being his ultimate, most favorite toy, all oh, the songs he would sing to his own reflection. The bird could not walk by a toaster, a disc, or a spoon without stopping, stunned by his own beauty, and bust out into rich, beautiful song, the Yoo-Hoo times ten version. He would dance, shrugging his shoulders back, side to side, stepping, chest out, legs long. The mirror was truly his first and foremost love. And he could sing, cluck, and coo to himself for hours. And it was soothing on the ears to hear. I never tired of it, but found it a bit ridiculous how he could just go and go. No matter what kind of rotten day I might have had, or how mean and cruel some so-called friends could be, Digger's cheerful song always, always made the badness go away, and put a smile on my face, and brought warmth to my soul. This wonderful treatment I got from him, which he gave to everyone he would meet, was something that will live on loud and proud in my heart forever. He was animated like a toy. He loved the ring of a telephone, and would fly over to say hello to everyone that would call. He would listen to, putting his ear to the receiver, pausing to listen to what you were saying as well. That bird has a genuine interest in people, not so much in other birds inquisitive and pushy to get to whoever that new next person might be that walks through the door. Traveling in the back seat of the car, he'd chirp in glee at the cars next to us saying, Are you who? Hello. Hi, how are you? People in other cars, drive throughs elevators, would all stop and smile and laugh at the little clown digger. He simply made friends everywhere he went and left a lasting impression on everyone he met. He was loved and adored by many, and every day of his life, I always, always told him that I loved him. Fast forward to 20 years later, so much laughter, songs, and snacks, still going strong, outliving his general life expectancy. He amazed friends, families, strangers, and vets with his youthful and robust appearance rich, throaty whistle, and superior flying skills in small spaces. That bird taught me a lot. He taught me that the early bird catches the worm, to sing even though you don't know how to, to love yourself because you are number one, to enjoy junk food and coffee in moderation, and to have fun. I hope he thinks I took good enough care of him as his welfare was always my number one concern, he took good care of me, taught me how to live, how to love, and now he has graduated to birdie paradise far above the rooftop of his comfortable cage, far above the roof of this house, above the clouds, soaring at mock speed, doing figure eights in heaven with the angels, screaming his meaningful songs, loud and proud, and free of old age and the limitations of mortality. You did it, boy. You made it to the Rainbow Bridge. Your work here on Earth is complete. You, Digger, are a gift from God, the greatest gift. I love you, Digger, forever.